So this is the last part of our chapter four on data, uh, large sets of data and Excel tables and conditional formatting. And this is the section on, this is the lesson four, the conditional formatting. So we're gonna do a couple of things, uh, things we've seen before just as refresher, but then also we're gonna investigate the conditional formatting and understand what conditional formatting means. So I have um, in our worksheet now, we had the raw range of data. We had the Excel table data that we worked with. And now I've created this new sheet for conditional formatting. And you can see that it's an Excel table because once I'm in the actual information, I have my context specific ribbon with the table tools for design. If I go into my insert tab, again, the table is um, grayed out you know, indicating that this is already a table. If I click on my context specific ribbon, I do have that I can see it has a table name. And I'm just gonna name the table like we saw before, TBL, and I'll just call it delivery, delivery this time, okay? To differentiate it from maybe what we did before. And remember when we name things, if we're in the regular PC laptop, on our, uh, sorry, on our formulas tab in the name manager, whatever we've named will show up in that name manager. On the Mac computers, it's a little different. You'll need to look at the Mac lesson for that one. So let's do the same types of things. Let's look at the flash fill again. So I can start typing in John and then start typing in Peter. And because this is an Excel table, the flash fill fills it in nicely. And then I have May and then I start typing in white, and again, flash fill takes over. We saw before when we're doing calculations, um, I have a couple new um, columns in this sheet. I have the number of items, which we saw before. I have a new column I, new number of items, and then I have a new column J, change in the number of items. So I'm gonna put a formula here to just calculate the change in the number of items. I'm gonna go equals and I'm gonna to point to the new number of items and I'm gonna subtract the number of items, okay? And we'll just go equals. And if we go up to the formula up here, notice again how, because this is an Excel table, all the rows are automatically populated. I don't have to copy the formula down. If I go up into the formula here, you can see how, it has the at symbol, meaning we're in the current row, and then the new number of items, and then the number of items, those are the field names. Remember, these are what we call unqualified structured references. Unqualified, because I don't have the table name attached to it, and structured, because as opposed to using cell references like uh, I3 minus H3, it's using the actual column names. We had seen also before a slightly different way of doing the formulas. So equals, and I could put the square brackets. The square brackets is an indicator to Excel to bring up the field names for the table. And for the amount, we're just going to do it. <coughs> so what we did before, take the price, close the bracket, multiply that by, square bracket again. We're going to pick the number of items, close the square brackets, and then enter. And if we take a look at this formula, go up into the formula bar, we can see how it's highlighted the table columns for G and tail, table columns for H. Notice it doesn't have the at symbol this time around. So again, but again, so, you know, we don't necessarily need that. That's sort of redundant information while we're in the table, but these are again are unqualified structured references, unqualified because it's not name in the table and structured because it's using the structure of the actual table. So just wanted to refresh that. Let's take a look now at our conditional formatting and where do we find the conditional formatting? It's on our home tab, it's in the style section and we have this drop down for conditional formatting. So the purpose of it is to spot trends and patterns in our data using different types of things, colors, fonts, fills, all this kind of different stuff to highlight important values or important trends in our data. Conditional because the 
formatting will only apply based on what condition we set. It's sort of like an if statement, but it's embedded into the code. We can just use the conditional formatting. So for example, say I come here to the first name and I highlight all the cells that I want to have the conditional formatting applied to. So in this case, D2 to D25, I can go up to conditional formatting and we have a number of options here. Cell rules, top bottom rules, data bars, color scales, and icon sets. Now the highlight cell rules, we have a number of different options, greater than, less than, between, equal to. Now obviously those would apply for numerical data. And then we have text that contains certain things, or we have a date occurring, or we have maybe duplicate values. So I'm going to pick text that contains, and it just picked up the first cell here. So I'm going to change that information. I'm going to change it to Carl. Okay. So it's looking for that cells that contain in that range that I have selected the word Carl. And then here's the formatting options. It has some predefined options, but then it also has custom formatting, which brings up our format cell. I'm just going to cancel out of that box for right now. And I'm going to leave it with light red fill with dark red text. And if I go OK, you can see that the column D, the first name column in the table, the name Carl is highlighted, filled red with red font. Okay. Let's take a look maybe at last name. Again, highlight the cells, go into conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and let's think duplicate values. So I'm gonna pick duplicate values and there's lots of duplicates, right? Because the last names are repeated over and over. So you're gonna see how, you know, you're gonna to have to be um, comfortable with your data and make sure that, you know, whatever type of conditional formatting you wanna apply, it makes sense. Now this one doesn't make sense in this case. So I'm just gonna cancel that out. I will show you an example where it does make sense. So I'm gonna take that row and I'm gonna copy it. So control C and I'm gonna bring it down to the bottom of my table and go control V. So remember that's a way that we can create a new row in a table, just add data to the bottom and I'm gonna escape so I don't have anything selected here. And I'm going to go to the column A and highlight the cells A2 to A26. I'll go conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and let's go duplicate values. And let's pick a different example here. Let's go green fill with dark green text. And if I go OK, you can see how well these two had the exact same value in them. So they're both highlighted green. So that's looking at some text values. Let's take a look at some numerical values. So let's come here. We'll highlight our H2 to H26, go into conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and let's go, let's pick a between. Greater than and less than are pretty obvious. Let's go between. And let's say, let's go between, let's make it 15 and 25, just nice and simple. And again, this time around, let's do a custom format. So let's make the custom format. Um, I'm going to have the font bold. I don't want red color, so I'll leave it as black. I'll go fill, and we'll make it fill, say, this pale yellow. And we can go OK and OK. So now you can see the values that meet that condition, meet that criteria I set, are bolded and have the yellow coloring. Now we have a couple of different what we call conditional format rules going on here. So it's going to be maybe relevant for us to come into our conditional formatting again and come down here to see manage rules. So this is where we can see what rules are actually being applied okay, and where they're being applied. So this was the last one I did and it's usually applied uh, in order shown. <coughs> so the last one I did shows up first here. So we saw here that we did the Carl, we did the Carl again, and again, 
D here, I guess I did this one incorrectly. So, you know, this is, oh, this is a handy thing that you can come in and say, okay, you know what? I don't like that rule, let's get rid of it. So here's the, the three that I've done. The one for the Carl, where it highlighted it with red font and red background. Here's the one for the duplicate values. Here's the one for the cell values. And you know, here's the, the cell values between 15 and 25 in column H would be bolded and yellow fill. Now we can see the range that it's applied to. Say I change my mind, I don't like what that's doing. I can come in and edit my rule. It brings up an editing format rule window. It shows that the format only sells that contain. So it's a slightly different window than what we saw before, but it's doing the exact same thing. And it has the between. I can reset the between. I can reset the formatting. Maybe I prefer to have it this pale green. And I can go OK and OK. Now notice, though, while I'm in this window, it hasn't changed it to green. Okay. So if I am going to edit a formatting rule, I need to make sure that I click Apply. Once I click Apply, now you can see the formatting has been applied. So just watch out for that. And I'm just going to go OK. So we took a look here at highlighting some different cells. Let's maybe take a look at a date occurring. So we have to go over to a date field. So let's highlight B2 to B26, and that's my entire table. Now, if you're having trouble uh, selecting your cells, you can put yourself in the top cell, use your shift key and your down arrow, and see how it's just extending it one cell at a time. And now I've overshot it, so I can come back. And now I have my B2 to B26 all selected. So let's go back to our conditional formatting, highlight cells rules, and let's go a date occurring. So this says yesterday, well, that doesn't make sense. So here we have in the last seven days, next week's, next, next month. Now, none of these make sense, right? Because this is, you know, back in 2017. So let's just, let's pick this one. We'll leave the, uh, we'll change this to uh, yellow fill. We'll go OK. Now it's not highlighting anything. So this is where, you know, conditional formatting, manage my rules. Let's bring this one up. Let's edit the rule. And here we can see how we have, oh, now maybe we can pick different values. So if I leave it as dates occurring, I still only have the same selection. So that's a little bit of a limitation. Um, if I was looking for a particular date, I would have to maybe do a greater than or less than. So let's maybe cancel this. Let's delete that rule. Let's apply and go OK. Let's leave it highlighted. Let's come up to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and let's go greater than. And here, see how we can pick a date? So, you know, it has defaulted to February 5th, 2017. I'm going to put it back to that yellow fill. OK, and I'll just go OK. And we can see that now that that dates, those dates have been highlighted. So it was, I said, highlight greater than. Let's take a look at it again just to make sure I don't say it wrong. Uh, manage rules here. Edit rule greater than, now this is the one problem I don't like with Excel, with the conditional formatting, is that now my, my sort of date looks weird, okay? So cell value greater than, I have this weird date. If I take that out and maybe put in um, February, let's put February 7th, 2017. Let's go, okay. Let's go apply. So I said greater than February 7th. And this is where, you know, uh, remember Excel numerically identifies each day. And instead of putting the actual date here, it's showing the value. So, you know, this, this is where it could be a little maybe quirky. You know, maybe we wouldn't want to do a conditional formatting on a particular date. Okay. But again, we can see how it has applied. So I'll just go, okay. So that's basically the conditional formatting with highlighting these different options here.
You can take a look at more rules, and then it comes down here. We can format all, cell, format all cells based on their values. We can format only cells that contain certain values, only top or bottom. We're going to take a look at that in a minute. Above or below average, unique or duplicate values, and then formulas. And this is the last one we're going to look at is formulas. So let's go cancel out of there. And just to clean things up a little bit, I'm going to go into my manage rules and I'm going to delete all these rules. And I'm going to apply it and I'm going to go, OK. So now we're back to where we were before. Let's move over to a numerical variable or numerical data. So there's our number of items, H2 to H26. Let's go conditional format and let's take a look at the top bottom rules. Now we have top 10, top 10%, 10 top bottom 10, bottom 10%, 10 above average, below average. And again, if we come to more rules, you know, we see these different values that we can pick. I'm just going to go back into the options here. Let's take a look at the top 10. Now, even though it says top 10, I can change the top 10 and switch it to say the top five, or maybe just the top three. And again, it gives me that default, some default formatting, and I can come into the custom. And maybe I'm gonna just give a fill for that and a bold for it. And I'll go okay and okay, showing that these are the top 10 values. And the, I bolded it and the default font was uh, red there. I could switch that to black if I wanted to. If I want to switch that around, so let's undo that conditional formatting. So now it's gone. I'm going to keep the same cells highlighted. We'll go conditional formatting, top bottom rules. Let's do the top 10% and see how now we have different values as a percentage of the values that we've looked at. And again, we could switch that to the top 20, change the font to what we like, and go OK. So of all the cells here, of all the values here, the top 20% are these highlighted cells. We'll undo again. We'll go into conditional formatting, top bottom rules. Well, the bottom 10 works the same way. So there's the bottom five. So now we're highlighting the low values. I'll undo that. Let's take a look at the bottom 10%. So here's the 10%. Bottom 10% are these two values highlighted. We'll undo it. We'll try another option here. Let's go above average. OK, so here now above average is that Excel is calculating the average of the number of items and then it's highlighting the ones that are above average with these this formatting. And I'm just going to put it in the yellow. I'm going to go OK. And remember in our table, if we go to our design tab, we can add a total row. And just so we can compare here, let's put the average. So the average was 2304. And you can see that all the values that are in this yellow background and red font are above 2304. Just to, you know, again, refresh the total row, but then also show you how the formatting works. And I'm going to come here in my table. I'm going to go back to my home tab. I'm going to come into my conditional formatting, manage rules, and I'm just going to delete that rule, apply it, and OK. Let's highlight them again one last time. So D2 to 26, conditional formatting, top bottom rules, and now we can do below average. And we'll leave those as red. And now you can see these are the occurrences that are below the average of 2304. So just a couple of basic options that we've looked at there. So we've looked at the highlight cell rules and the top, top bottom rules. Let's take a look at data bars. Now with data bars, now before I do that, I'm just going to push my cells over a little bit so we can see it a bit better. So in my data bars, we have two sections, gradient fill and solid fill. And this is neat because as we hover over it, we can see that little bars 
So it's almost like the spark columns again, but this time it's a bar within the cell and it's adding a colored bar to represent the value in the cell. So it's looking at all the different bars and saying, okay, so the scale, the higher the, sorry, look at there, the higher the value, the longer the bar. So you can see that, for example, the 32 in row five, that's a very long bar. And I believe that's the longest. No, I have one last entry here down in row 25. That's 34, and that takes up almost the entire cell. So basically, that's our horizontal scale for those number of items. And we can see, you know, comparatively speaking, we can see how some are below and some are closer to that. So that's a green one. That's a red gradient, purple gradient, blue gradient, light blue in this case, and orange beta bar. So these are gradients because it's darker on one end the other, well, to the other. We could go solid. So then there's a solid blue, solid green, solid red, solid purple, solid light blue, and solid orange. So let's maybe just do the gradient. I like the gradients myself, just a little easier in the eyes, I think. So I'm going to pick gradient blue. And now we have, you know, maybe if we're just looking to scan our data, now we can sort of scan looking at the actual data bars. If again, we highlight those and come into our conditional formatting and go to manage rules, come to that rule, edit the rule, you can see here that we do have an option for the data bar that I can show the bar only. And if I show the bar only, what happens? You don't see it right now. So I'm gonna go okay, and I'm gonna apply it. And now the actual numbers are gone. So we could, if we weren't really interested in the exact values, we could just show the actual bars. And I can go okay. And we can see now the bars are the only things showing. Now be careful with your bar colors if you're choosing them, because obviously with this sort of table style I have, I have blue on blue, and that might not be the, the best thing to see with the banded rows. I could easily get rid of that though, right? By going to my design and getting rid of my banded rows. Maybe I'll leave those off just to make the conditional formatting pop a little better. So let's go back to home. Let's go conditional formatting. Let's go to the manage rules again. I'm gonna to come to that rule again, edit the rule, and I want the actual values to show. So I'm gonna deselect show bar only, go okay, apply it. Now I see the numbers and the actual um, bars and I'll go okay. So that's our conditional formatting with data bars. Now keep in mind, it has to be numerical data, right? Okay, let's do the same thing for the amounts. Let's take a look. So let's do M2 to M26. Let's go conditional formatting and let's take a look at color scales. And the same type of thing, actually, I'm gonna get out for a minute again, just to cursor over so we can see these a little bit better. So conditional formatting, color scales. Now, this is going to apply a color gradient to a range of cells. The color grade indicates where each cell value falls within that range. So you can see there's shades of green, shades of orange and yellow, and then shades of red. And, you know, the darkest red, the lowest numbers, the brightest green, the highest numbers. And I can pick whichever color scale I like. So this one had green, yellow, red scale. This one has red, yellow, green, so reverse. This one has green, white, and red, okay? This one is red, white, green, so reverse. Now it's the blue. Now it's the reverse blue, red, white, and blue. This is now just shades of white and red, shades of red and white. Then with the green, white and green, green and yellow, green and yellow. I'm just gonna go with the first one here, green, yellow, red. So green, the highest values, you know, this is a, an amount. So a, a larger amount would be a good thing. <laughs> a lesser amount would be a bad thing. Okay. And we can just pick it and we're okay. And again, if we go to conditional formatting, manage rules, we see that rule, we can edit it. And you can see how we have a three color scale. These are the different colors. 
This is how it's set up automatically. So we can see sort of some of the stuff behind us. Here's the preview, lowest to highest. So the deeper orangey red to the deeper green. We could change it to a two color scale. So it would be more like this. We could change it to a data bar or we could take change it to icon sets. So I'm gonna cancel that out. We'll go okay and we'll just cancel. We'll leave it. So we've done data bars now, and we've done the color scales. Let's take a look at the last option, which is icon sets. So we're going to do a couple of different things here. In my column H, so I'm going to highlight my H2 to H26 again, and I'm going to come conditional format, and we're going to go icon sets. And the icon sets, we'll just take a look at um, red, yellow, or green, yellow, red, so three traffic lights. And again, it's choosing a set of icons to represent the values in the selected cells. Maybe I like stop signs or like traffic light symbols, so maybe we could use that. Maybe I could use four with symbols as far as shapes. Again, four just circles. I could use, you know, check marks and flags if I like. I can do ratings, I can do little bars, and these little bars, that, that's sort of nifty actually, because now we can see, for example, say the third row in row four, so H4 cell, we can see that the value is 15, and now instead of the data bar across, we also have the teeny tiny little icons, the columns. So you can see that in row 15, well, almost all the vertical columns are highlighted. I have to just sort of get back on it so that it stays there, as does 34. So again, just a nice little visual representation. If I do pick a rating, notice how the stars are partially filled. Same thing with the pies, same thing with little squares. And we could have more rules, but let's for fun, let's just pick the traffic lights. So again, I could go into conditional formatting, manage rules, pick up that rule, edit it, and now again, I could put reverse icon order. So maybe I want red to be the highest, not the lowest, okay, for whatever reason. I could show the icon only. So again, I could do that, go okay, and apply it. So now the numbers are gone. I'm gonna bring it back though, because I do want us to see the numbers. So we're gonna keep the numbers and we're gonna apply it. We're gonna go back to edit it. We could set different values if we wanted to. Um, for myself, I don't find this particularly helpful. Uh, I would prefer to have a, a little bit more functionality there. But you know, you keep, keep in mind the icon is just a little visual representation. So typically the defaults are okay. We can also change the um, icon set. We could come down here and say, well, I don't like the traffic lights. I want one of these other ones. And again, now we have a little bit more option for these arrows. Maybe we'll go, I'll just leave it as default. So I'll go okay and apply it. So now I have different arrows. Must admit, I'm not really fond of this, but um, maybe on the nightly news, you've seen how in the stock market, when it's going up and down, they usually give the number with how much it's gone up and down. So I'm just gonna return that back. I like the little traffic lights. There they are there. And I'll just go OK and apply and OK. So that's some different little icon sets. Now, in the case of column J, maybe that is an area where I want to show the up and down. So if I highlight J2 to J26, conditional format, icon sets, let's use the up and down arrow. And if you wanted to see the rule behind it, manage rules pick that rule, edit, and we can see the different values. Now I could set these values again, but you know, typically we're just looking for a, a quick and dirty um, comparison. So I'm just gonna leave that, I'm just gonna cancel and close. All right, so we've looked at quite a few different things here. We've gone through all the conditional formatting for the highlight cells, top bottom, data bars, color scales, and icon sets. Let's look at something a little more complicated. So I'm going to first off get rid of all these rules that I've set up. 
So I'm just going to delete them all. Don't forget, you have to click apply. Go OK. And we're going to try and do a couple of rules down here. So let's take a look and let's say that, OK, um, I want to highlight. Let's see. Let's pick the driver's names. So C2 to C26. We're going to go conditional formatting and we're going to go new rule. And this is where we can pick a rule that we want, or here, this is the one we're going to do. We're going to use a formula to determine which cells to format. So I'm going to format these. And I'm going to go equals, and I'm going to use the function and open brackets. We're going to say that, um, now let me make sure, because I was messing around with the columns here. So yep, so F2. So F2 is indicating look for the values in column F. If that is equal to TV, now that's text, so it has to be put in the double quotes, comma, and then H2, so that's my number of items, is greater than or equal to 30. If those two conditions apply, we're going to format the driver's name. And we're going to format the driver's name. Now we can pick our formatting. So we'll go format. We'll say, OK, we're going to bold it. We're going to leave the color automatic. So we'll leave it as black. And we'll put a fill. Maybe we'll put a little darker orange fill. Well, let's go for the lighter orange there. And we'll just go OK. And we'll go OK. And nothing is highlighted because we said that H2 had to be greater than or equal to 30. So if I look at the TVs, so here's where we can check things with our filters. So there's our TVs and notice how we don't have anything greater than or equal to 30. So let's maybe change that rule. Let's come back to conditional formatting, manage rules, bring this rule, edit it, and let's say greater than or equal to, let's put 20 in there because we can see that there are some values greater than or equal to 20. We'll go OK to the side here. We'll apply. We'll go OK. And again, if I filter on TV, you can see here. I only had one instance for the driver's names where the item was TV and the item was greater than or equal to 25. So see that one instance of John May was highlighted. Let's bring back the filter. Let's maybe do some different things. Let's maybe make it washing machine and 15 because we can then see some stuff up here. So we'll go conditional formatting, manage rules. I'm going to edit this rule. So this actually, this is fantastic because this has happened. Notice how when I come back to my editing rules, some weird stuff is now being put in these cells. OK, so this is where you're going to want to carefully correct these. OK, and I need to. So F2, we're going to change to washing machines. And here we have H2. And we're going to make that this time around. Let's make it less than or equal to. And we'll leave it as 20. OK. And let's change the formatting. Let's make it pop a little bit better. Let's make it this yellow. OK. So watch out for that that sometimes different little coding happens in Excel, I find. And sometimes when if you see that your conditional formatting rule is not working, go in, especially when you're creating a rule like this one using a formula, go back into the edit formatting rule and verify you have the right information here. So we'll go OK. We'll apply it. And now you can see. All right. So the rule said F2 had to be washing machine. So there's washing machine. And it said that H2, so column H, the value there, had to be less than or equal to 20. So we can see here, washing machine less than or equal to 20. 
Washing machine less than or equal to 20. Washing machine less than or equal to 20. Notice how here we have a washing machine, but it's not less than or equal to 20. So this, this name, driver's name, is not highlighted. So I'll go OK. And there we can set up a rule. Let's set up something else. Let's maybe try this one down here where J2 is equal to Boston. So let's actually highlight the amounts. <clears throat> so M2 to M26, conditional formatting rule. New rule again. We're going to pick a formula. Okay, so we want a formula. And the formula we want is that we're going to have equals J2. No, actually, this is going to be, oh yeah, L2 in this case. Sorry, I'm going to have to update that because I changed my, uh, my column names. So L2 is equal to Boston. Okay, and I'll go, okay. And something didn't happen here. So again, if it doesn't work, go into your conditional formatting, manage the rules here. Well, I didn't have a format set. So let's go edit rules and let's pick a format. Let's go bold, italic, and let's do a fill. Let's pick something different. Let's pick a gray fill. Okay, we'll go okay. We'll go okay. We'll apply it. We'll go okay. And now you can see that the M column, the cells were highlighted when the L column included Boston. So let me just fix that. That has to be M2, L2, excuse me, not M2, L2. So we're, fix that. So L2 is equal to Boston. So when this, any cell in this column is equal to Boston, I wanna highlight the amount in italic and gray background. So you can do different, uh, different types of conditional formatting. There's quite a few of them. Um, the most complicated one is that new rule one where we're actually using a formula. And this is where we can put in some different functions. And for our purposes, we're typically only gonna use two examples like what you've seen here using the and function, meaning that there's two things that have to be checked before the formatting will happen. Or we can use just a simple one where we're just looking at one cell. So I'm gonna cancel there. Last time, I'm gonna go into manage rules. Oh, I have to have my current selection. So let's select the whole table here. Conditional formatting, manage rules. And in this table, so if I wanna pick all the, all the rules that are there, now I can take a look at this one. So again, edit rule, here's the, Formula, cancel, edit rule for the other one. There's the formula. And notice how the cell references are appropriate. And we'll just cancel and close. So that's our conditional formatting. You will be doing that in your simulation training, your simulation exam, and your assignments.